Hi, I'm Deborah Lee Baldwin, author of three books about succulents, and I'm going to take you on a stacked Crassula adventure. Look at these crazy little plants. See, they look like sort of like eels or caterpillars or maybe beads on a necklace. I'll be showing you well over a dozen different varieties. Look at this one. Isn't that cool? Look at the stacked squares of those leaves. I'll explain how to care for stacked crassulas and show you examples of how to use them in your garden and pots. I've grown nearly all of these where I live in the foothills northeast of San Diego, zone 9B. You'll also discover how to take cuttings and propagate these plants. My main criterion for the succulents I selected is that stems go through the middle of leaves, like a string of beads. Find detailed cultivation requirements on the Crassula page of my website, DebraLeeBaldwin.com. You've already met Crassulas if you're familiar with jade plants, the most common shrub succulents. I featured jades in an earlier video. Next up, general info about stacked Crassulas and what they're not. In their native South Africa, stacked crassulas grow amid rocks and in cliffside crevices. As stems grow and become pendant, roots may emerge from leaf axles. No doubt you'll notice with your own stacked crassulas how roots grow down into thin air as though sniffing around for soil. I grow stacked crassulas in pots to better protect them from the elements, and because they're small, they tend to get lost in the garden. Flowers of stacked crassulas emerge from the tips of the stems. Flowers are tiny, white, or pink, sometimes yellow or red. Apart from the flowers, how can you tell if a succulent with stacked leaves is a stacked crassula? Well, crassulas don't have prickles or sharp points. This is an aloe. This trailing succulent is Ceta mangelina, a type of stone crop. Leaves may look stacked, but they emerge from the stem rather than encircling it. Other stacked succulents not in the genus Crassula include certain cotyledons, Vocarias, Sansevierias, Kalanchoes, Gasterias, and most notably, Aworthias. These aren't pendant, nor do they have perforated leaves. Find more about them in my books, my other videos, and on my site. Keep in mind, stacked is a descriptive rather than an official term. With the propeller plant, Crassula perfoliata, variety falcata, it's hard to tell. Appropriately, for a gray plant, it falls into a gray area. I'll leaf it. To you to decide whether propeller plants are jade-like, stacked, or somewhere in between. You'll need the plant's botanical names if you plan to shop for them online. I provide them in the Crassula Gallery at DebraLeeBaldwin.com. There and in the video description, you'll also find links to mail order nurseries. Crassula rubricollis candy cane illustrates striping, officially called variegation, and also how crassulas redden if given plenty of sun. Keep in mind that variegated plants are more prone to sunburn due to less protective pigment. This eye-catching plant pot combo is one of many design ideas I've included to inspire you. Crassula perforata is the most common genus of stacked crassula. Its name is easy to remember if you think of how the stems perforate the leaves. Stems that trail to 18 inches long are lined with rounded pointed leaves that alternate at right angles. Leaves are about an inch or so in width and blue-green margined in red. Crassula perforata is also the toughest stacked crassula for in-ground garden beds and borders. This is Crassula perforata in low light and in full sun. 
Here, Crassula perforata is with two other succulents that also have a stacked look and echo its colors. Their dark red sedum dragon's blood and the paddle plant, Kalanchoe luciae. Arguably one of the most beautiful succulents is Crassula perforata variegata, which has plus sign striping. It produces tiny golden flowers on long slender sprays. This unusual white variety has delicately fringed edges. Cream, yellow, and chartreuse are common. Crassula perforata variegata is even more beautiful when leaf tips and margins turn rose red. Notice the dots on the leaves. They're water transferring pores called hydophodes, and they're typical of the genus Crassula. Here I combined variegated Crassula perforata with other variegated plants in a pot with great texture. Included are Aethormium aeonium kiwi and aeonium sunburst. Isn't this wreath amazing? I can't begin to guess how many cuttings went into it. I saw it at Succulent Gardens Nursery south of San Francisco. They sell wreath kits, which are moss-filled wire frames ready to be planted with cuttings. Find out how to plant a succulent wreath on my site and YouTube channel. Mountain Crest Gardens, a leading succulent specialty nursery, offers the Crassula perforata subspecies Cougaensis, native to South Africa's Kuga range. This rare variety, often mislabeled online, is smaller with tightly packed leaves and a paler color. Leaves of Crassula rupestris resemble hearts that point outward. The brilliantly red-edged hybrid high voltage shown here with aloes and aeoniums and again alongside the regular green species. I combined Crassula high voltage in an art pot with Euphorbia anoplia for texture and color contrast. Variegated aloe nobilis in the back echoes the stacked Crassula's pointed leaves. High voltage frames an agave, fringes the edge, and repeats the container's rusty color. If you're uncertain if a plant is Crassula rupestris or Crassula perforata, rupestris flowers form pink bouquet-like spheres those of Crassula perforata are lighter in color and appear on longer, more linear stems. Compared to the flatter leaves of Crassula perforata, those of Rupestris are fleshier with more rounded undersides. Can you tell which stacked Crassula is in bloom here, mixed with pale green burrow tail and orange sedums? It's the basic green form of Rupestris or in horticultural terms, the species, meaning nothing comes after that name. There's no subspecies, variety, cultivar, or parentage. Crassula rupestris springtime has plump, wedge-shaped green leaves and globular flowers. Its other parent is Crassula perfoliata falcata. One popular widely grown cross of Crassula's perforata and rupestris is baby's necklace. It has smaller, rounder, and plumper leaves so tightly stacked you can't see the stem between them. Had anyone asked me, I might have suggested the name String of Donuts. Perhaps it's best they didn't. This is one happy baby's necklace. Just look at all those blooms. Baby's necklace grows downward. It also turns toward the sun. The resulting U-shaped stems make the plants appear endearingly inquisitive. In an undersea-themed arrangement, they make ideal eels. Baby's necklace enhances a composition that sparkles with variegated Crassula perforata and dwarf aloes that resemble sea stars. Here's jade necklace, Crassula rupestris subspecies Marniariana, with Crassula moonglow on my deck. Jade necklace is often confused with Crassula rupestris subspecies Monticola, which has boat-shaped leaves nearly as thick as they are wide and that blush pink in the sun. And Monticola is confused with Crassula brevifolia, a name that means short-leaved in Latin. And either one might be sold as Crassula tom thumb, 
But all you really need to know is that these succulent darlings are pretty much interchangeable. To give you an idea just how tiny Tom Thumb is, this mini wheelbarrow easily holds 15 cuttings. Pop quiz. Can you identify the different stacked crassulas here? While you're pondering, I'll mention the planted upper right is a crassula too, but a shrub variety. The large pot also has two Echeveria agavoides rosettes, a dwarf aloe that has stressed to dark red, and on the right, the paddle plant Calanchoe luciae. This sort of arrangement is a good example of what you get when combining cuttings. Succulents blend together beautifully over time. So how did you do? If you're puzzled by the dark green variety in the back, well, so am I. It's probably Crassula repestris growing in low light, or possibly Imperialis. Crassula Imperialis is a cross between Rupestris and Crassula pyramidalis. My recently acquired pyramidalis is sun-stressed, perhaps too much. I'm going to let it recover and revert to green in bright shade. Learn about how and why sun reddens crassulas and other succulents and view a gallery of 50 before and afters on my site. The term for reddening is stressing, but it doesn't hurt the plants. Well, up to a point. Stacked crassulas with leaves that form four pointed stars and that get progressively smaller toward the stem tips are called pagoda plants. Their minaret-like geometry is beautiful until they bloom, and then individual stems elongate, which ruins their symmetry. To keep the plants from getting long and floppy, pinch out flower stalks as they begin to form. Tiny cultivars with red leaves may be sold as Red Pagoda, Pagoda Village, or Caput Minima, which means small head. Larger shark's tooth will get six to eight inches tall over time. Alongside Crassula capitella campfire are silvery blue echeverias and rosy hued graptocetums. This is campfire in bloom. Look closely at the centers of these campfire rosettes. See where they've been cut? Trimming keeps them compact. It also stimulates new growth. Notice the new little leaves alongside the cut ends. This colorful combo blends campfire. Crassula repestris, blue echeverias, and lavender pachyverias. Take cuttings of stacked crassulas that stretch and replant them every year or so. A stacked crassula that looks delicate yet literally hangs in there year after year is the trailing variety calico kitten. The name hints at its variegation of cream and green, which blushes to pink and red. Here I combined it with an upright dwarf aloe with similar coral pink edges, a fuzzy echeveria for texture, and a burgundy sempervivum that echoes the pattern on the pot. This perfectly stressed calico kitten is in a full sun location near the coast where cool mild temperatures lessen the chance of sunburned leaves. Growing in a hanging pot in dappled shade in my garden, its white flowers contrasting with its dark red leaves, is the red or rubra variety of calico kitten. It's from wholesale grower Altman Plants, and I got it at Oasis Watery Fish and Gardens in Escondido, California. A miniature variety of calico kitten that Mountain Crest Gardens calls Crassula Petite Bicolor or Little Missy has a lengthy botanical name. Crassula pellucida subspecies marginalis minima albo variegata. Before you roll your eyes, allow me to translate the Latin. A succulent with translucent and tiny variegated leaves with white margins. Like most, its growth habit and color vary depending on location. In this shady coastal San Diego garden, petite bicolor is a ground cover. That's intriguing, but you sure wouldn't want to step on it. Farther inland, in greater sun, it shows more pink. Repeating the pink of the terracotta pot, petite bicolor, surrounds an aeonium sunburst rosette that has blushed pink. And trailing from the pot is watch chain crassula. Crassula muscosa, commonly called watch chain, is a lot tougher than it looks. 
Here it's in an undersea-themed potted garden in dappled sun. Crassula muscosa gets tangled after a couple of years. To tidy it, simply give it a haircut. A larger variety with stems about as thick as chopsticks is Crassula muscosa imperialis. I grow it in a vase-like pot so it'll undulate wherever it likes. Next are rare species and cultivars that are becoming more available. They're collectible and worth grabbing if you run across them. Tiger jade, Crassula exilis subspecies cooperi, forms tight clusters of star-shaped leaves in shades of gold, brown, and green, and purple or red underneath. Its hydathodes, or water-exchanging pores, are brown, giving the leaves a peppered look. A more descriptive common name might be leopard jade. This diminutive stacked crassula is reputed to make a very good houseplant. Crassula mesemprianthamoides has slender, tapered, silvery leaves. If its eight-syllable species name is intimidating, well, mesemprianthamoides simply means it resembles ice plant. It and Crassula valcata were crossed to create the cultivar Morgan's Pink, which has disc-shaped leaves and flowers that form spherical pink bouquets. I've had good luck growing Crassula Moonglow and Morgan's Beauty, which have thick silvery gray leaves. However, they do make me wonder if the fatter the plant, the slower the growth. A stacked Crassula like Calico Kitten is a racehorse in comparison. Plump succulents also store so much water, their roots don't need to provide much, so they may rot if overwatered and, being heavy and not well anchored, fall over. But remember, a stacked crassula on the ground sends roots from its leaf axles, so to the plant, it's an opportunity for propagation. Crassula perfoliata variety falcata at left is one parent of Crassula moonglow, which is on its right. Crassula deceptor is moonglow's other parent. It's white due to a powdery coating called farina. In some specimens, hydathodes form raised bumps, creating a scaly texture. Due to its glacially slow growth, Crassula deceptor is rare in cultivation. Crassula dorothy, a small, slow-growing hybrid of Crassula deceptor and Crassula susanne, eventually forms a mesmerizing colony of chunky green rosettes. I love how the pot suggests that the plants were scooped out of their habitat. The glaze repeats the color and texture of the plants. Even the top dressing echoes tiny golden flower buds. Crassula Buddha's Temple is a cross of Crassula perfoliata and Crassula pyramidalis. It has thin, wavy green leaves that pancake upward to form an inch-thick tower that's narrower at the top and several inches high. There's also a clustering form. Likely related to Crassula pyramidalis is Crassula spiralis. It's also known as Crassula estagnol for the nursery on the French Riviera that discovered it. Wavy green leaves that pinwheel upward to about five inches produce flower clusters. Crassula socialis is tiny and tightly clumping. Notice at upper right how its new leaves curve inward and look like little balls. Crassula barclii forms columns that suggest elongated Brussels sprouts. It's slow growing and clusters seldom get taller than four inches. It's prone to rotting if overwatered, so when in doubt, don't. Crassula pangolin, an uncommon cultivar of Crassula barclii, has an appealing fuzzy texture. Stems grow to about six inches over time. Although you can't always see the stems of stacked crassulas, good news, it's quite easy to start the plants from cuttings. These three photos are of the same stack of pots that I originally planted in 2014 and that I show in a how-to video, which has had over 125,000 views. I refresh the composition every few years. The best time to propagate stacked crassulas is spring through midsummer when they're actively growing. Take a cutting one to two inches long. 
gently strip off lower leaves to reveal growth nodes, which is meristem tissue that formerly generated leaves and now will grow roots. Anchor the cutting in potting soil so it stands upright and its bands of growth tissue are buried. Keep soil barely moist to encourage root formation, but not so wet you risk rotting the stem. Baby plants are vulnerable to sunburn, so place in bright shade. In a week or so, check for roots. When they're formed, water the little plants along with your other succulents. Handle delicate stacked crassulas a bit differently. Trim several inches of growth and lay the strands atop the soil. New roots will form from leaf axles and go down into the soil. Spritz occasionally to hydrate tiny roots in soil, taking care not to dislodge them. Also see my video in which nursery manager Erin Ryan shows how to propagate stacked crassulas. Strawberry pots are perfect for trailing plants like stacked crassulas. Tuck rooted plants or cuttings in pockets. If you'd like to share your suggestions and experiences with any of the stacked crassulas, please do so in the comments. Find additional information in my books, in the video description, and on my website's crassula page where you'll find a gallery with plant IDs. I hope you found this video helpful and entertaining. My goal is to inspire you to enjoy using succulents in fun and creative ways in your garden and outdoor living spaces. Please know I appreciate your comments and do subscribe and hit the like button. I'm Deborah Lee Baldwin. Thank you for joining me.